President Biden hit the road on Tuesday to promote his signature infrastructure deal one day after signing it into law. The president visited New Hampshire, where he discussed how the $1.2 trillion plan will help repair aging and damaged roads and bridges. During remarks, Mr. Biden said this bill shows Democrats and Republicans can work together to get things done. The infrastructure plan is just one part of the administration's overall economic agenda. Focus now shifts to passing a larger social and climate spending plan. House Democrats are pushing to bring that bill to a vote this week. For more, I'm joined now by Jeff Mason. He's a White House correspondent for Reuters. Hi there, Jeff. It's nice to see you again. So President Biden has not visited New Hampshire since February of 2020. How significant was Tuesday's trip? Well, it was significant, number one, Elaine, and nice to see you, too, uh, in that it's the start of his kind of campaign to sell the infrastructure bill. And when I say sell, uh, not to get it passed, but to, mm -hmm. to talk about the fact that it was passed and passed successfully by Republican uh, and by Republicans and Democrats uh, in the House and in the Senate. It's a, a significant success for Biden, yeah. and he wants to know that. Sorry to step on you there, Jeff, but I mean, why is that necessary? I mean, traveling to Detroit to promote the plan, I think some folks might wonder if you went through these negotiations and you were trying to you know, bring the sides together, isn't the work now done? What's the broader context here of this president's road trip to places like New Hampshire and Michigan, by the way, you know, about a year out now from the midterms? Yeah, well, it, I think it's it's worth noting that both New Hampshire and Michigan are considered political swing states. The presidential election, of course, is three and a half years, a little less than three and a half years away, but the midterms are about a year away, and these are important states. So the selection of those two places for this tour uh, are, are not, um, I don't think we could say coincidental, mm -hmm. but uh, that, that to answer your question as to why, um, it, there's a there's a big political aspect to this, and that is his poll ratings are low, um, and he wants to show both the, the people who supported him and those who didn't that he's delivered on a promise, and he did deliver on a promise. This is something that he said he would do, and uh, despite some criticism from Democrats about taking time to get bipartisan input for it, he did that. Uh, he he got support from both parties and and passed this massive bill. That's not what he's doing for the next piece, the, the so-called Build Back Better bill, um, which, which does not have support from Republicans. But this one did, and he wants to tout that in important states like Michigan and New Hampshire. So the signing of this infrastructure deal comes during rising inflation and issues with the supply chain. What is the Biden administration saying about how both the infrastructure, uh, infrastructure package as well as the social spending bill would address those concerns? Well, inflation is de definitely a hot button issue in, in the in the country right now, and, and politically here at the White House, um, it, it's something that Republicans are, are clearly uh, criticizing the president over and saying that his policies are leading to this. To answer your question, the White House argues that this bill and the Build Back Better bill uh, would help tamp down inflation over the long term uh, through its investments and uh, through basically just through the, the many aspects of the bill. That's not something that Republicans um, necessarily are agreeing with. And it's also, at least with regard to the Build Back Better bill, which is more than a trillion dollars, uh, something that Senator Joe Manchin, who's a Democrat from West Virginia, has also raised uh, concerns over. So it's their argument, and they cite economists, and, and multiple times they like to talk about Pulitzer Prize winning economists who have said uh, this will help bring down inflation. Uh, that's the White House's argument, but it's it's not resonating, at least with everyone um, who is who is a critic. You mentioned Senator Manchin. So on the social spending bill, the Congressional Budget Office is expected to release a full cost estimate for the plan by Friday. That's the final step for some moderate Democrats before they commit to a vote on the bill. What exactly are lawmakers looking for in that analysis? So I, the Democrat, moderate Democrats, as you rightly said, Elaine, are, are looking to basically to make sure that the bill is paid for and that, it, that there aren't going to be increased costs that, that are not covered, uh, which, of course, is different from the way that some you know, Republicans handled some of one of President Trump's major legislative achievements, which, which was the tax cut, which was not funded. Uh, this bill is funded. The White House argues that it is, is funded, and the moderates just want to have this report to to verify that 
And once they've done that, then um, they have said that they will vote for the bill. But the legislative clock is certainly ticking quite loudly, as you well know. All right, Jeff Mason. Jeff, great to see you again. Thanks very much. Thank you.